If you're trying to lose fat, you've probably heard someone say that you need to move more and eat less. And that's true, but on its own, that advice sucks. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know from a training perspective in order to finally lose fat once and for all, just like these guys did right here. Okay, so by now I've said it a million times, the only way to lose fat is to create a calorie deficit or to eat less calories than you burn so that you can actually burn from your fat on your body. Now, having coached dozens of guys lose fat in order to successfully create a calorie deficit, you need to take care of your nutrition. And I have a whole video on that. So if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and watch that first before coming back here. If your goal is to lose fat, my guess is that you don't just want to lose fat. And what I mean by that is that you actually want to look better with your shirt off. And looking better with your shirt off for most people is typically a combination of losing a bit of fat and gaining a bit of muscle. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Real quick though, a strength training plan needs to be individualized just like everything else. Else. So take everything that I say here with a grain of salt and use this as a starting point and customize it for yourself. Or better yet, hit the first link in the description, fill out an application, and I'll help you do it in my one-to-one -one coaching program. That being said, though, if you are doing this on your own, you're trying to customize a training program to yourself, you need to take into consideration how long, if at all, have you been working out? If you've never worked out before, don't just hop into an Arnold Schwarzenegger style workout and expect to be able to walk for the next week. You also need to take into consideration any injuries you might have. What's your mobility like? Do you have good balance? What equipment do you have available? Also, how much time do you have to, to dedicate to this? So with that out of the way, there are going to be three areas that we're going to cover today. The first one being strength training, which has a plethora of subtopics in there. Then we're going to talk a little bit about conditioning. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with some sample workouts. So let's get into it. So starting off with strength training. So there's no such thing as a fat burning workout per se. And we've already established that we're going to primarily focus on our nutrition and our diet to create that calorie deficit. Now, for most of my one-to-one -one coaching clients, they have either never followed a proper training program or it's been a long time. And if that sounds like you, then this is going to be a great place to start for you. And what I typically recommend in these situations are full body workouts starting at three days per week. Now, that might not sound like much, but when done properly and consistently, it's going to be a great place to start, especially if you have a busy schedule, if you're new to the gym or it's been a long time since you've been in the gym. So let's dig into it. Now, before we get to the actual workouts, I do want to talk about some different components of strength training so you know how to manipulate these variables in order to actually lose fat. So we're going to talk about the movements, the sets, the rep ranges, intensity, rest, and tempo. So first off, the movements should be about 80% compound, 20% isolation. Now, the big compound movements, this is what should be the meat and potatoes of your workouts. So they work lots of muscles, things like squats, things like hip hinges or deadlifts, lunges presses and pulls, um, tons of different variations of each of those. And then sprinkle in the isolation movements that work only a few or just one muscle. So like stuff to train the biceps, the triceps, um, calves, core, things like leg curls, leg extensions. Now, this is going to be a very general recommendation, but I think anywhere from about four to eight movements is more than enough for most people for most workouts. Moving on to rep ranges, eight to 15 is a great place to start. And rep range is surprisingly a hot topic of debate, it seems like, on social media. But let's make this simple for you watching at home who just wants to know what to do today. So it looks like 8 to 30 reps have all been shown to build muscle effectively. But from a practicality standpoint, most of your sets will probably fall between that 8 to 15 rep range. And if you're brand new to the gym or if it's been a long time, I'd suggest leaning towards that upper level of the range there, uh, that 12 to 15 rep range for most of your exercises to start. So you get more practice at it. You get more reps, more practice with each movement in a shorter amount of time. But reps are directly correlated to intensity, which we'll get to here in, in just a minute. Moving on to sets, two to three per exercise. Probably a great place to start for most people. But a general rule of thumb on how many sets to do, more reps equals less sets. Less reps equals more sets. More exercises equals more reps equals less sets and less exercises equals less reps, which equals more sets. But again, if you're just starting out two to three sets is probably a great place to start or aim for about 25 reps per set. So if you're doing repetitions of 10, three sets of 10 or four sets of eight, five sets of five, six sets of four, 10 sets of three. All right, moving on to intensity. What we want to aim for is about an eight out of 10 effort. So intensity can refer to two things. First off, it can refer to the load 
or the weight used for the lift and can be written out as a percentage of your one rep max. But it can also mean the perceived rate of exertion or the perceived level of effort. And for the most part, you want to take most of your sets to an eight out of 10 level of effort, where 10 means you could not have performed a single more rep and actually died. And zero is when you could do this movement forever. So you want to be about an eight out of 10 on that. So for example, let's say you're doing some bench press for a set of 10. You don't just pick any weight that your heart desires and start busting out reps. Instead, what you want to do is pick a weight that you could only do for about 10 to 12 reps, giving it almost 100% of your effort. Now, typically what I find with new clients is that they're typically leaving too much gas in the tank. They give up much too quickly and that leaves reps on the table. And this can be the reason that they don't see much progress at all in the gym is that they're not training intensely enough. So a good way to avoid that is to do an exercise and actually go to failure to where you could not produce another single rep if your life depended on it and your muscles feel like they're about to explode. So you know what it really feels like to hit failure and then take most of your sets just short of that, but not all the way. So do this on something like a leg extension, a chest press machine, something machine related. Moving on to rest. One to two minutes of rest between sets is probably a great place to start for most people watching this video who want to lose fat. But when it comes to rest, there's two ends of the spectrum. There's complete rest, which is better for performance, and there's incomplete rest, which is better for metabolic adaptations like fat loss. Now, the rest period will depend on the goal that you're going for. So are you trying to lift as heavy as possible? Then rest longer for two minutes or more. But if the main goal is fat loss, then this probably isn't going to be the best game plan anyways. So if you're trying to keep your heart rate elevated and get some cardio gains while also getting some muscular gains, then keep that rest period a bit shorter, maybe like 30 to 60 seconds would be a great place to start. But for most people, I'd recommend one to two minutes rest per set so you can give that full effort to the next set. Last thing here on strength training is tempo. So what's tempo mean? Tempo just refers to the speed at which you're doing each rep. So a good tempo for most people is gonna be controlled. You know, let's take a look at a squat. You don't wanna just dive bomb to the bottom and bounce up because you're not gonna be fully getting the most out of each rep and fully training the muscle at hand. So for the most part, I think a slow-ish but controlled rep is what you wanna focus on. And I think controlled is probably the best word uh, to describe how you want the tempo of your reps to be. So this will help you practice the movement, keep you safe, and put your muscles under tension long enough uh, for you to get the best benefit. Okay, moving on to conditioning. So conditioning falls on a spectrum like most things, but there are two main types of conditioning. There's aerobic and anaerobic. So for aerobic, think longer duration, but lower intensity. And for anaerobic, think shorter duration or and, and higher intensity. So everyone's specific needs, goals, and abilities are gonna be different. But if I were to make a general recommendation, I would say that you you should spend most of your time doing aerobic style conditioning. And here's why. It's very important to have a robust aerobic system because the majority of the energy that we make is in the aerobic system. So it makes sense to train that system. As Zoe from Muscle Nerds says, we spend the majority of our life in the aerobic system and it's been referred to by her as the life pathway. So again, it makes sense to train the system that we spend most of our time in. You sitting at home watching this video, you should be in the aerobic state right now. Maybe you're on a treadmill watching this. I don't know. But if you're just sitting, relaxing, hanging out, you should be in an aerobic state, you know, using fat as a fuel source here. Doing aerobic style cardio also helps your body get into the rest and digest state uh, as opposed to the fight or flight state. And this is going to increase metabolic flexibility. Now, metabolic flexibility is a fancy word that in what it means is that it dictates that we burn carbohydrates when we train and we burn fat when we are at rest, which is what we want want. That is the goal. So in order to do this, we need to increase that rest and digest state and reduce that fight or flight state at rest. So that's easily done by doing aerobic conditioning sessions. Okay, cool. I know we covered a lot here today and hopefully by now you have a great understanding or at least knowledge of all the different areas of training as it applies to fat loss and some general recommendations. And for the sample workouts that I promised at the beginning of this video, those are going to be linked down in the description, which will take you over to my 
website where you can go ahead and find some sample workouts over there. And what I recommend kind of based on everything that we talked about here today. So to quickly recap, there's no such thing as fat burning workouts and a calorie deficit is the only way to lose fat. And by focusing on your nutrition to create that calorie deficit is going to be your best bet. But lifting weights and doing cardio will also help you reach your fat loss goals even faster, as well as make you look better with your shirt off, which is probably what you really want anyways. In my opinion, full body workouts starting out at about three days per week is an excellent starting point for most people. And don't forget to add in some additional aerobic cardio when or if needed. So there you have it. Thanks for watching the video here all on training, uh, but be sure to stick around for the next video where I'll be talking about everything lifestyle related to fat loss. So you're not going to want to miss that. Don't forget there's sample workouts down in the description below. And if you're interested in learning more about my one-to-one -one coaching program, where I help you implement all this stuff into your own unique situation, there's also a link down in the description to my one-to-one -one coaching application. So be sure to check that out. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace the f out.